Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to explore how to simulate an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber for different phi and theta angles. And also we will discuss why it's important to simulate a designed absorber at these different angles. So let's start discussing about this and learn how to simulate an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber for different angles and also the requirement or need for those. Yeah. And actually, talking about that, when we simulate an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber in different phi and theta angles, these angles actually define the direction of electromagnetic wave. Like in this case, we designed our electromagnetic metamaterial absorber, a 3D model of our electromagnetic metamaterial absorber using the CST Studio suit. So simulating it at different phi and theta angles actually represents the direction from which electromagnetic wave gonna strike the surface of the metamaterial over here, you can see. As a, also, as we design an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber, it is crucial that our design actually performs efficiently for all possible angles of electromagnetic waves or incident waves. In real world application like, mm, we're gonna use this particular design if we have to implement in real life application. The EM waves actually can can strike the surface of various angles at, you can say, the EM wave can strike it um, the surface of the electromagnetic wave absorber in different angles where it can be parallel or it can be vertical or also it can be with different phi and theta angles and values. Therefore, we need to ensure that our absorber actually works efficiently and deliver the same amount of result with same efficiency for all possible angles of pi and theta over here. And in the far field section, if you're going to see the far field over here in the left side of the navigation tree in CST, if you click over here and give it a front view, here you can observe that the phi angles actually operating horizontally to the um, horizontally relative to the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber, and while the theta angle is actually vertical to the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. To make it more clearer, if you take a look at this graph, particular graph shown over here, you will see that the phi angles actually correspond to the horizontal direction of the absorber surface. And the phi angles can vary across one zero degree to 180 degree, meaning the electromagnetic wave actually can hit the surface of the um, uh, electromagnetic metamaterial absorber from left, right, top, and bottom in all the from all the directions. As a result, the absorber will actually show different performance in different angles of you can say phi. And depending on that, we're going to find out different reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient, or you can say different absorption, maybe. On the other hand, the theta angles works vertically relative to the surface of the absorber. In this geometry, you can see that when the theta angles is at, you can say, 90 degrees, the incident electromagnetic wave will bypass the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber without interacting the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. This is because at 90 degree theta angles, the wave is directed such a way that it doesn't strike the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. Like here you can see these two in the front of the geometry, it's actually striking the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber, but when it's actually looping around in a vertical motion um, surrounding to the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber, uh, while it's at 90 degree, it's actually surpassing the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. For making it more clearer, you can see another geometry, which is over here. Here you can see in the geometry when theta is at 90 degree motion, the wave actually travels parallel to the surface. It's actually parallel to the surface and that's why it's missing the absorber um, altogether. Like here you can say the black portion is the substrate and upper layer is patch and um, right beneath the substrate it is the ground. And you can see altogether the electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic wave when it's in 90 degree, 90 degree of you can say theta, it's actually missing the surface of the um, uh, designed electromagnetic metamaterial absorber altogether. Therefore, when discussing and simulating an electromagnetic metamaterial, 
it's important to consider this behavior to avoid using a 90 degree theta angle. Yeah. And we typically um, simulate the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber for theta value between 0 to 80 degree or 89 degree at most. Uh, as we because as we know that while it will be in 90 degree it's gonna miss the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber so it's not gonna show a perfect result though we actually use um many of our many of uh, us use the crack version of tst studio suit that's why we not used to um, get those results um, from those crack version of tst so um, it's actually working in because official CST studio suit, if you use, you're going to find out this kind of mistake um, while uh, simulating an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. So here in this case, we need to be careful and uh, simulating um, while simulating an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. Meanwhile, um, for the phi angles, you can check the behavior of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber at wide range of angles up to 0 to 180 degrees because this kind of um, you can say this kind of um, incident or this kind of situation not gonna arrive while we're simulating the electromagnetic metamaterial for different phi angles like um, which we face in theta angles yeah the, the you can say the goal in designing an electromagnetic metamaterial absorber is to ensure its performance well and shown consistency in all possible angles that's why we used to um, consider all of this while simulating the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber yeah yeah so right now we're gonna uh, go into the here you can see you gonna be more clear over here the phi is working in horizontal and theta is working in vertical it's gonna round in vertically and uh, phi is gonna in phi is gonna strike the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber in horizontal direction yeah, so um, right now, um, so now we're gonna see how to simulate the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber for different phi and theta angles. And for that, we have to go first, we have to go to the, over here, you can see the um, component and if you perspective. And here, if you go to the schematic section, you're gonna see the theta value is zero and phi value is also zero. That means the theta angle and phi angle right now is at zero degree so um, by changing the value of theta and phi you can able to simulate the this particular design for different phi angles and theta angles yeah and right now if we change the as we say the phi angle can be um, changed from zero to 180 degree and can um, we can observe the result for out of that and for theta we're gonna simulate it um, zero to 80 degree and max at 89 as we know that at uh, 90 degree, it's gonna miss the surface of the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber. Though it's gonna show some results, but it's not mm, perfect. Uh, yeah. So if you have to change the value, suppose uh, in this case we're gonna uh, make the theta value constant and make the uh, change the phi value mm, and observe various results for that. If we change the zero into suppose 30, uh, 30, and two. And there is an option coming over here that the operation will change the model and invalidate existing result, delete current result. If you um, want to, um, you can say store all possible results for different angles of theta and phi, you can store current result. You can select the store current result in the cache. This will uh, save the previous results for um, um, in each step, like if you simulate it in 30 degree, it's gonna uh, save the previous result, which is in zero degree. So after the simulation have been completed, you're gonna able to see all possible results for different angles. So you can um, click the store current result in the test. This will give you some benefit to uh, further in the in your work to research on different angles behaviors of your designed electromagnetic metamaterial observer. And you can click the OK button. And you have to click the F7 button to implement this. And if you gonna see here, uh, phi is converted into 30. And to obtain the result of electromagnetic metamaterial absorbers um, S11 and S21, uh, this is actually working for zero degree, uh, our previous result. If you now, you're gonna say, 
if you now simulate it again it gonna um, again generate the um, results for 30 degree of you can say what we changed over here you can see we changed the theta phi value so now it's gonna show the results for th 30 degree um, of phi angle yeah phi or what yeah uh, it's now if we simulate the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber now what it will be um, what it will generate it's gonna generate the value for 30 degree phi angle and, and for zero degree theta angle Let's start Now, as you see, the simulation have been completed. If you go to the S11 section, you can see that S11 is showing for 50 degree. The value is showing for 50 degree, which is our previous result. And also now it's also generated the result for 530 degree as well. And if you select, you, you, you can also check the result individually. If you select um, for zero, 50 degree, it will show the result for zero degree. And if you select the 30, it will show the 30 degree result of five of s11 and um, for s21 as well you can see both the section by clicking um, another by shift you can um, see both the results by um, selecting both in uh, in a uh, in similar time here yeah. and if you go to the s11 you can also see and also you can um, observe uh, from the result that for a uh, 5 0 degree and 30 degree there um, will be no change in reflection coefficient in that means s11 here you can see and now if you want to um, simulate it for different angles again you have to go to the schematic section and also you can change the value of 30 to 60 80 90 120 150 whatever value you want um, uh, in for your electromagnetic metamaterial absorber to simulate and also you can convert it to zero zero over here and you can change um, the value of you can store the current result in cache here you can see okay and it's committed go to this schematic section and convert the value of theta to suppose like we want to simulate it uh, for 60 degree you can uh, con click and um, give the value 60 and hit enter and if you go to the this section in this section you have to um, for um, implementing your um, change you have to um, click the f7 button yeah then now the um, changes has been saved and if you now simulate the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber again you're gonna find out the result for theta 60 degree and um, if you hit the start it's gonna now simulate uh, the electromagnetic metamaterial absorber for theta 60 degree and after um, the simulation has been completed you're gonna find out all the results in s11 and s21 and by selecting different uh, portion you're gonna find out different results and uh, can observe in um, each of the results individually yeah that is how you are gonna simulate um, theta and phi angles uh, um, theta and phi angles for electromagnetic metamaterial absorber yeah so thank you for so much for watching this video i hope this video will help you to understand and clear your concept about electromagnetic metamaterial absorber while simulating it in different phi and theta angles and also will help you to clear your concept um, why we need to simulate it in different angles and if you um, think it uh, it helped you to understand um, something you can subscribe our channel and um, if you had any kind of question you can um, write uh, on the comment section and i will try to solve it um, according to my capability and uh, also try to respond as quick as um, possible yeah